and welcome back. We have looked at this notion of scripts and we have seen a couple of small examples. The last one was this uh, road accident example and we saw how script, uh, how SAM which is a script uh, applier mechanism uh, could answer questions by calling the relevant uh, modules. Now, scripts are only the beginning in the sense that that is not the not everything that we know about the world can be captured using scripts essentially. So, scripts embody patterns of stereotypical events in a situation. A script based under, understander tries to map incoming information onto the script. So, it is like a large data structure that you have and you are trying to match things into that. There must be a mechanism to introduce other possibly different type of knowledge structures because scripts are just patterns of stereotypical activity. You know, you have to reason with other things in real life situations. So, the following story, even though it is situated in the restaurant, can only be partially understood by the restaurant skip, the fact that he went to a restaurant and so on. So, what is this story? The Spillane's strolled into Cafe Budapest. While the waiter was taking his order, the owner or notorious mafia figure approached them threateningly. Essentially. Now, clearly, you and I understand this theory that there is something more than routine that is happening in uh, here. The routine thing in the restaurant is to go place your order, eat and come out. That is the simplest thing that can happen. But here we are talking about a mafia figure approaching them threateningly. You need something else to understand these stories and we will look at this notion of goals and plans uh, after we are done with scripts. So, this is how SAM is structured. As I said, it is a collection of programs. What you see in rectangles here, LE, PP memory and applier are programs. What you see in oval like structures is the data essentially. Solid lines represent um, flow of control and dotted line represents flow of data or flow of information. So, the first program to come into action is LE that is to be expected because it generates, it converts uh, English language into conceptual dependency. The next program is called PP memory in there this thing, but it is basically a semantic memory. It knows about props and roles and things like that which are ap applicable in the script. And the third program is actually mapping the input conceptualizations into specific patterns in the script essentially. So, for that of course, it needs script data as input and it creates a story representation as output. So, what happens at the end when the whole thing works together is that you input a story text which is in English and you get an output which is a story representation in conceptual dependency. Everything beyond LE is language independent essentially. So, this whole idea that you can represent this knowledge of scripts in, in we represent it in English, but there is nothing to stop us from representing it in a different language. As long as we have this parser, which will take English and convert it into our representation essentially. And of course, we should have a generator which will take our output for example, question answering which is not shown here, this is only the understanding phase uh, and generate it into the target language. So, as we said, uh, what LE does is it extracts conceptual elements that are explicit, it avoids doing any inferences, it is just parsing, semantic parsing. The PP memory, PP is remember picture producers, uh, is a memory of scriptal roles and props. It matches incoming tokens to expected ones essentially. So, PP memory has some idea of what are the roles and props in the script and it has got some about some idea about the category of the incoming information and it does some allocation there. 
it assigns tokens to pps and acts acts are actions remember in the output of le also generates tokens for roles in the scripts then there are also permanent tokens for example manhattan new delhi and so on these are permanent tokens which uh, are known to everyone so if you look at this story that john took a bmt to manhattan to see a play then bmt and manhattan are permanent tokens so the program is expected to know about them then at the theater he walked over to the ticket counter and asked for a ticket the usher took it from him and showed him to his seat this is all part of the script the play was so offensive that john decided to leave the theater refused to refund his money so we are not going to process this we are just showing it as another example that sam had actually processed but we cannot go through all the output that their programs generated so le does not question where john came from or who did he ask for a ticket it just translates from english to cd theory does not even try to fill in for pronouns it's a pp memory which creates a token for a cashier and usher and seat and infers that it in the sentence is the ticket and showed him to his seat means john's seat essentially it's a semantic memory as we have said it's a bit like what we expect of of first order logic representations and including things like frames it has some ontological knowledge about conceptual classes and so on in contrast scripts have episodic knowledge they talk about events and episodes and in particular in that given situation so the script applier is a program which takes over from pp memory and it has three problems to solve the first is locating new input in its database of scripts so the script applier will have access to many scripts it has to somehow figure out as to which of those strict scripts are likely to be needed to understand this input sentence and the, or the story which is being told so that's a script management problem which scripts are relevant to the given input scripts are picked based on various patterns that scripts also have some headers as we will see scripts also have a preconditions that make a script active for example patron is hungry would trigger a few scripts so the cooking script for example or a restaurant script for example the pattern matches sets up the desired stick context one at a time and tries to see decide later which of those scripts it thinks are applicable is actually applicable once it has chosen a script and it is trying to match that it has to set up predictions about the likely inputs to follow essentially so this would be useful in understanding the incoming sentences instantiating the appropriate segment of the script up to the point referred to by the input so whatever story part we have heard we must create an explicit representation of that story as well including the inferred sentences so an active script which means a script that is being used by sam to try and match the information is defined by a context applier which is a program that we are talking about uh, tries active scripts one by one so the context for the script is defined by a list of patterns which predicts what inputs will be seen at a given point in a story a binding list which links the tokens for pp is produced by the pp memory with script variables so you should be able to figure out that john is a driver or john is the cashier or john is the patron as the case may be a record of the script scenes that are currently active so scenes are smaller than scripts and so these scenes are aggregated into scripts a list of scriptal inferences 
in particular events which have happened which interfere with the normal flow of the script. So, this will give some clue as to whether one is working with the right script or not. A script global strength indicator which Sam uses to flag how strongly it believes in the influences it is making which means how strongly it believes that the script that it is using is the right one. So, this is the overall structure of uh, the script applier program. Uh, it has as you can see three components. One is the pattern uh, match controller which is the first thing which becomes active. Then the predictor which will you know generate expectations and, and uh, which will clear episodes and it will load new episodes which are to be expected. And the third part is the episode instantiator which will create the actual story representation. The first part sets up context one at a time as we have said explicitly mentioned. First explicitly mentioned ones and then the active ones and then finally the dormant scripts you know, just in case we are not able to match with the existing ones. The matcher does the backbone match of the stick that do we the main conceptualizations of the script are they matching with the input story and it does role fit and role merge. Remember role fit is identifying roles and role merge is conflating roles together, conflating mention of individuals into the same role. The inferencer will do things like check for degree of hurt. So, for example, we know that in this uh, accident story, we inferred that Frank Miller was slightly injured. That is an inference that one can make and the predictor will update as to what is it that we expect to hear next essentially. And it will clear earlier predictions because if they have already been met or they have not been met as the case may be if there are branches in the script and it loads what to expect next essentially. And finally, the final story representation. So, this is the general high level description of how the script applier operates. The applier itself receives input from this program called PP memory which has got semantic knowledge about the roles that the script uses which itself uses input from LE which converts English into conceptual dependency and this finally generates the story which is then taken over by question answering in case you want to answer questions or by generating a summary essentially. But at the end of this we have an explicit representation of the story including the parts which have not been stated explicitly in the verbal story but which we have been inferred because we have said that this is a script which is active. So, we will look at a detailed example uh, uh, and uh, we will do this uh, in the next session.